Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at an automotive circuit. Now, we're going to look at a car's blinking circuit, and we're going to go back into the 1970s and have a look at the cars built by GM in that era, because there's a bit of a mystery about how the blinking circuit worked on the cars built in the 70s. Now, in my hand, I have a common bulb. It's 1157 bulb. If you notice, there's two filaments in this bulb. One filament is for the blinker, another filament is for the park lights. If you look at the bottom, you can see the two contacts, one for the parking lights, one for the blinker. And the, the ring, this ring here, is a common ground. So this is a very common bulb used by GM and in a lot of their cars. Now there's another bulb they use. It's a 194 bulb. That's this bulb here. This was used for the side marker on the side of the fender. So together with a 194 bulb and 1157 bulb, made up the blinker circuit in the GM cars in the 1970s. Okay, here's the front end of a 1971 Camaro Z28. Now this blink circuitry I'm describing came out in 71 in the Camaros. So if you look at the front we can see the headlight and we can see the bumper and right below the bumper is is the blinker and the parking light. And on the side of the fender we can see a rectangle lens. Uh, that's the side marker. So the way GM wanted this blinking circuit to work during the day if the driver put the blinker on the blinker would blink on the front and the side marker would blink in unison uh, with the blinker. So they would both come on and off at the same time. Now during the night, if the driver put on the parking lights, then the parking light would come on and the side marker would come on solid. But if you used the blinker, the blinkers would alternate. So the side marker and the blinker uh, below the bumper would alternate. They wouldn't be in unison. But if you turned off the parking lights, then the blinker would be in unison with the side marker. So that's what GM wanted from their engineers. So their engineers had to come up with a circuit to do that. Now remember back in the 70s there was no microcontrollers. They, had, they would have to build things with relays or transistors. So the engineers had, had a task how to come up with a circuit that GM wanted. Okay, I've built my little 1970s blinker circuit. You can see the 1157 bulb, which is the blinker and the park light. And over here I have my side marker. So during the day, if I'm driving my car, and I put on my blinker, which I'll blink right now, you can see my blinker light and my side marker blink in unison. When I release, they both go off. Now during the night, I turn on my parking lights. So you can see my parking light is on, on my 1157 bulb and my side marker is on. Now if I go to blink, if I want to blink, make a turn, now the blink alternates because the parking light is on. This is during the night. It gets more attention when you have an alternate flash. Now if I turn off the parking lights and I do a blink and it goes back into unison. So that's the circuit. So how would you build it? How would you design this circuit the way it was built in the 1970s on the GM cars. Okay, here's my circuit layout. This is the same circuit GM used. and You can see it's pretty simple. You just have the two bulbs. There's my 1157 bulb. There's my marker bulb. And this switch is my on-off switch for my parking light. And this is my blinker to simulate my blinking. It's like a blinking module. So very simple circuit. There's no relays, no transistors, no diodes. Just the two bulbs. So what's the key to this mystery? Well, the key is the bulbs. Now, every bulb has a filament, and every filament has a resistance. Now, the resistance of the filaments in the 1157 bulb is very low in comparison to the side marker bulb. Uh, the side marker bulb is a lower wattage bulb, so it has a higher resistance. So we could call this bulb a high-resistant bulb, and we could call 1157 a low-resistant bulb. And because of the difference of resistances between the two bulbs, and voltage divider circuits, they came up with a circuit, they used it to their advantage to build their GM blinking circuit. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my 70s blink circuit, and we could go through the components. Here's my 12 volt battery, that's my 12 volt battery in the car. Uh, there's my blink switch, my blink module. There's my park on off switch, uh, my side marker bulb, and 194 bulb, and my 1157 bulb, which has a blink filament and a park filament. So we'll call the 1157 bulb a low resistance filament bulb and the 194 bulb is a high resistance bulb. 
Now when we go to blink the circuit during the day, we go we want to blink put on the blinkers. So we short these two terminals together and we'll get 12 volts directly across the blink filament. So the blink filament will come on. It will blink. At the same time we have 12 volts on one side of the marker uh, bulb. Now the other side of the marker bulb gets its ground through the parking filament. Now remember the park filament is a low resistance. So at this point here uh, the 194 bulb actually sees a ground. Now in a series circuit, in a series voltage divider, the higher resistance gets the largest voltage drop across it. So the largest voltage drop will be across the 194 bulb. So the same current flows through the 194 bulb as through the park uh, filament. But there's not enough current to turn on the park filament, but there's enough current to turn on the, the side marker. So the side marker will come on. So as we're blinking, the side marker and the blink filament will blink in unison. Now when we turn on the park switch, we'll feed 12 volts down to the park filament, so the park filament will come on. We'll also feed 12 volts to one side of the marker. Another side of the marker will get a ground now through the blink filament. So now the, the, the park light will be on and a side marker will be on. But now when we go to blink, now we're going to feed 12 volts to the blinker. And now we're going to have 12 volts on, the, on one side of the, of the side marker. And now we'll have 12 volts on the other side of the side marker because the park switch is on. So we have no voltage difference between the two. So there'll be no current flowing through the bulb. So the bulb will be off. So that's why the bulb will alternate now with the, with the blink circuit. So when the blink circuit is on, the blink filament will come on. And when the blink module is open, then the side marker will come on because of the park, the park switch. So that's how the circuit works. It's pretty simple. That's what the engineers came up with using the two different resistances of filament in the two different bulbs to come up with a 70s blinking circuit. Okay, so now you know how this blinking circuit works. So if you have an old 70s GM car, or if your friend has one, go check it out. So remember, the simple solution is usually the best solution. So think in simple terms. Don't follow the crowd. Think outside the box. So next time you're designing a circuit, just think of this 1970 GM blinking circuit.